Are this year's Ravens or last year's Ravens the better team on paper? Is it a little too late for the Ravens to sign a pass rusher? If you could give him the truth serum, what would be the one question you would ask Ravens GM Eric DaCosta? Can Malik Harrison and Patrick Queen turn into one of the best inside linebacker duos in the NFL? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers, which is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. Now, if you want to be part of NFL Questions from Subs, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. And we'll answer your question in a video just like this. Or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And all that stuff is down below in the description. There's plenty of stuff in the description. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for the check-in. I will be responding to all the comments on our check-in video. And again, make sure you check that out if you haven't. Uh, and remember to always check in with people. Check in with your people, people that you talk to every day, people that you don't talk to every day. Check in on people, man, because it's important. We all need it. Uh, but without further ado, I love y'all. I really do appreciate y'all and the way that y'all support. But let's get into these questions. First question came from my boy Aiden. And real quick, funny story. I had actually recorded a lot of these questions already a little less than a week ago. Had it already, but I accidentally deleted it. So... Like my guy Cam Neal said second time, it should be better around. Anyway, he said, hey, how's it going, Engraven? Hope all is well. So my question for you is, do you think last year's team was better on paper than this year's team? Uh, in my opinion, I think this year's team is better. I think we got the guy at wide receiver and a future stud pass rusher in Adafi away. Even though they aren't players, I think Keith Williams and T. Martin were our biggest additions for the team. I think they are going to change the culture in the receiver room and help this offense take a big step in the passing game. Thanks for your time, Engraven. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And hashtag... Team keep it clean. Appreciate that, my man. Um, yeah, I would agree. And I think, I feel like you, you. I know you asked the question, but I feel like you answered the question too uh, with all of your responses. Um, some of the biggest additions to this team weren't even to personnel, but to uh, the coaching staff with uh, T. Martin and Keith Williams. They should prove to be really big uh, for the Ravens. And yeah, I, I do agree that I, on paper, on paper, the wide receiver room is looking like it can be better uh, than it was last season. You have an injection of youth, but you also have an injection uh, of experience as well. And you have an inje injection of speed and also route running, too. Um, and hopefully that route running is definitely upped this year uh, when it comes to all of our wide receivers, which it should be. I think we all expect it to. So that's big. Um, on the offensive line last year, uh, you had Orlando Brown Jr. and Ronnie Stanley. Uh, this year, you have Ronnie Stanley and Alejandro Villanueva. Um, so with Alejandro, we'll see how he stacks up uh, as far as when you compare him to an Orlando Brown Jr. Um, Orlando Brown Jr. definitely had youth on him. Um, and he was an up and coming right tackle who wants to go to left tackle now. Um, so, and, and he was not bad. He was not bad. I know a lot of people since the whole, the whole, he wanted to get traded thing came out. Oh man, he's not that good anyway, but he was an up and coming guy, young guy. Um, so I hope he does well out there in Kansas city, like, except when they play the Ravens. And, uh, but anyway, um, losing Marshall Yonda last year was big and they never quite filled that role but now with Kevin Zeitler a veteran uh on the interior of the offensive line uh that should help um Bradley Bozeman moving back to his natural position as center so that should be a smooth move oh shout out to that T oh that's some rough T to have your stomach all messed up but anyway uh then uh you talk about on defense now we have the same interior defensive lineman the Monstars uh now as far as pass rushers that remains to be seen. Um, Yannick Ngakwe, Matt Judon, uh, they're both gone, of course. Uh, Jihad Ward, he's gone as well. Uh, but we do have Adafi Away, Dalen Hayes, Tyus Bowser, Pernell McPhee. Uh, so we definitely have a, a, an injection of youth um, and inexperience. So it'll be a lot to be determined 
We're going to see about some things. Secondary, all the guys are intact. But something that I was just talking to my guy BZ about uh, at the Lamar Jackson Fun Day, um, he made a very, very great point. Deshaun Elliott. Deshaun Elliott, um, he, this will be his first off season, his first full off season, training camp and all that, being a starter. So he will have gotten to know the guys and really gotten to really dive in as the starter this off season. Because remember, last year was his first year starting because the whole, of course, the whole Earl Thomas thing was going down. Um, and they cut Earl Thomas and then it's like, okay, Deshaun Elliott, you're up. You're up. But then last year, we didn't even really have an off season. They didn't really have an off season. And the year before that, he was not a starter. And the year before that, he was not a starter. But he got injured both of those years anyway and missed the majority of the season. So with Deshaun Elliott, um, he should take another step forward because of that. And I, when my guy BZ pointed that out to me the other day, I was like, wow, that's that just makes so much sense. So in my opinion, I, I agree with what you said. I agree that this year's team on paper uh, is better than last year's next question came from my guy frank w he said ain't graven i've uh, been watching for the past two years now and love what you've been doing whenever new ravens news drops i don't go to instagram pages or twitter i go straight to youtube and watch your new videos i appreciate that man he said uh you keep me excited for ravens football year round and i appreciate what you do i hope you carter and the family are healthy and well again love what you're doing and keep up the great work hey thank you frank thank you for for watching man for real he said do you think at this point in the offseason it is too late to sign a veteran edge rusher. No, uh, but he said like Justin Houston or Melvin Ingram. Do you think that we even need another edge rusher with what we already have, like uh, with Adafi Away uh, or Pernell McPhee in the lineup? Let me know what you think. Love you and love what you do. Keep it clean. Appreciate you, man. Love you too. Um, I, I don't think it's too late. I don't. Um, but I think we're we're, we're getting is is we're getting there. We're getting like it's getting a little close now. So if the Ravens gonna do something, okay, go ahead and do your thing, Ravens. But if not, okay, no problem. Um, I uh, I still think they're gonna sign a veteran guy. And what they could do, they could sign a veteran guy just to sign a veteran guy just to see what he's got, and, and just to help push the young dudes that much more. And it could be one of those situations where um, it was like. Michael Floyd, when the Ravens signed Michael Floyd. Oh, and even when the Ravens signed uh, Shane Ray, I think that was his name. Shane Ray, who used to play for the Broncos, former first-round pick, I believe. Shane Ray. They signed both of those guys. They would, they took part of training camp with the Ravens and everything. Um, with uh, Shane Ray, he's a pass rusher. And they said, uh, no thanks, we're good. Appreciate you for coming by, stopping by, but we're going to go in a different direction. Michael Floyd. Hey, Mike, hey, appreciate you, big dog. Thanks for coming through. We're going to go in another direction. They cut both of them. Two veterans in positions where the Ravens could have used them. Michael Floyd, I, I never thought he was going to make the team, though. But two positions where the Ravens could have used them. Shout out to Pookie in the background. Uh, but they, they cut both of them. So it could be one of those things where the Ravens just, they bring on an edge guy just to see what he's got. Now, with Justin Houston and Melvin Ingram, I definitely think they could be assets to the team and they could help keep the young guys that much fresher uh, and give you that veteran presence there. Now, at the same time, like I've said before plenty of times, too, I, I don't mind. I would not mind us running with the young dudes. But um, I, I do still think the Ravens are going to get somebody on the edge. But it's probably it's probably going to end up being one of those signings that we just don't expect that we don't see coming and somebody who we weren't even thinking about. Next question came from Gillian. He said, hey, Engraven, my brother Ben and I are huge fans of the channel and we love watching your videos together. Please choose your favorite question. Hey, appreciate it. Shout out to you, Gillian, and shout out to your brother too. Appreciate y'all, man. Under the influence of the truth serum. Oh, sound like he been watching some Marvel stuff. But anyway, he said, what would be the one question you would like to ask Eric DaCosta? Hoo-hoo. Wow. Mm. So if I gave Eric DaCosta a dose of truth serum, what would be the one question I would ask him? How much do you, how much effort did you really put in getting these guys at wide receiver? And or no, how much effort did you really put in acquiring these players? I would ask him about DeAndre Hopkins. I would ask him about Adam Thielen. I would ask him about Julio Jones. 
I would ask him about Juju Smith-Schuster. I would ask him about T.Y. Hilton. I would also ask him about Yannick Ngakwe. And because those are all, I would, I would also ask him about Jamal Adams too. Because those are all players who it had been said that the Ravens were interested in and even tried for a lot of them. But for the majority of those players, well, for all of those players, they ended up failing. They didn't acquire them, fell short. Now, I know some of y'all are like, wait a minute, you said Yannick Ngagwe, the Ravens got him. But initially, they failed. So I would ask him, how much effort did you really put into acquiring all of those guys? Obviously, with Yannick Ngakwe, it was a little more effort because they ended up sealing the deal. Uh, but with the other guys, that, that would be my question for him. Oh, I, I love this, this question. <laughs> Boy, I love it, man. Anyway, next one. He said, what about Greg Roman's offense hinders the effectiveness of the passing game? And do you think the additions of Keith Williams and T. Martin will help solve the issues? Um... With Greg Roman's offense, uh, it is obviously run heavy. And that's what they do. That's their bread and butter. And that's not just a Ravens thing with Greg Roman. That's been a Bills thing with Greg Roman. That's been a 49ers thing with Greg Roman. They'll get their big plays in the passing game here and there, but it's really about the run game. Um, but what I think hinders the effectiveness of the passing game, uh, speaking from his experience with the Ravens, is not using guys to their strengths. Not putting guys in positions to where they can succeed, not giving them opportunities to where they can succeed, not creating enough mismatches for the defense. And just that would be it for me, because you it's like we see with Greg Roman. It, one of the things that has been frustrating with the offense is that we've seen flashes of things. We've seen flashes where it's like, oh, my goodness. Like, I, I'll take you back to the Cardinals game. The Cardinals game back in uh, 2019, week two. Uh, in 2019, um, there was a drive where Lamar set. Hollywood would, oh, fake like he was going to go, stay back on the screen. Lamar throw it to him. Hollywood catches it, gets a couple yards on the screen. So then, same drive, uh, and that, well, not even necessarily the same drive, but on that drive and, and on other drives as well, they would do the same thing. Same play. Set it up. Same play. Lamar, set, get the ball, throw it to Hollywood. Hollywood catches it, get a couple of yards. Sometimes he would shake for a little bit. Other times he wouldn't. But I watched that, and then there was a play, and, and if y'all want, y'all can look at the vlog from this channel because we went to that game, and we, we obviously was recorded and stuff, but... The play, they, they did that same play again. They were doing the play for a couple of series, for a couple of drives. And it came to another point where they were setting that play up again. Lamar set. Lamar faked it to Hollywood. And my camera's on Hollywood because I'm thinking, okay, Hollywood's about to catch another one. They'd have done ran this play plenty of times. He fakes it to Hollywood, but then throws it to Mark Andrews, who's open. Touchdown. Touchdown. And I'm like, oh my goodness. They called me off guard too. So the way that they set that thing up, the way that they set that play up, I was like, wow, can, can, can we get some more of this? So we, we see the creativity and then even like we go back to last year uh, with that play on the fourth down. And I wasn't the, I didn't really agree with it too much, but I'm glad it worked out. The direct snap to Mark Ingram. Stuff like that. Uh, we've seen going back to 2019 when we played the Bills, uh, it was right before halftime. They were acting like they, they were going to kneel the ball and they did a, a pitch to Justice Hill. It's like we and there have been plenty of other instances as well, but we see creativity here and there, but we don't see it consistently. And again, you don't have to be too pretty. You don't have to be too fancy, but you can implement some different things that can catch some people, even ourselves, off guard. And something we always make fun of, but it's, it's the sad truth about the Ravens just wanting, running that one screen per month. They run one screen per month, and that's it. Once they meet their screen goal, that's it. They maxed out. They're done. You won't see another screenplay until the following month. Not the following game, not the following week, the following month. So with that, I just I think that would be what I think hinders the Ravens uh, offense in the passing game. Uh, it's the lack of creativity. Ne next question. He said, who in your opinion? I know you told me to pick my favorite ones, but all of these have been my favorite questions that you sent. So I appreciate it. He said, who in your opinion is the most underappreciated player on the Ravens? Um, 
Well, I, defense, I would say Brandon Williams. But I think after uh, last year, I think people are really starting to appreciate Brandon Williams that much more. But I would still say Brandon Williams because I know um, he has a high cap number. And I do think that this could really actually possibly be his last year, um, especially with Justin Matabike looking to emerge uh, as a premier player. Um, but I, I think it could be him. Um and because with him, when we don't have a Brandon Williams, uh, the effects of it are just crazy bad. Um, he means a lot more to this Ravens defense, this Ravens uh, run stopping ability than a lot of people appreciate. Because he doesn't get the sexy numbers and all that. He doesn't get the pretty numbers and all that. So people are like, oh, we don't need a Brandon Williams. But he puts in that work. He reminds me, obviously, two different positions. But it reminds me of Jared Johnson. Jared Johnson, who was outside linebacker DM for the Ravens back then, not too long ago, well, it was a little while ago, but Jared Johnson, he was another guy. Didn't get the pretty numbers, didn't get the pretty stats, but he put in that work. He put in work, and it was similar to, even though his career didn't end the best with the Ravens, Courtney Upshaw. Courtney Upshaw is sort of the same thing, too. Put up the work, but don't get all the fancy numbers, the pretty numbers. Yeah, but you, your, your impact is bigger than what a lot of people realize. So I would go Brandon Williams. Um, and if I had to go, he said, uh, if I had to go another guy, uh, I would probably say Justice Hill. I know a lot of people with Justice Hill, they're not feeling Justice Hill because, uh, oh, oh, he's not even a good running back. Da, da, da. I've seen a lot of people saying that. But Justice Hill, he doesn't really get many opportunities to really even show anything. But where he does get his opportunities, he shines, that being special teams. Uh, Justice Hill is somebody that you could call on in a pinch. Um, and even when it's not a pinch, he's definitely been a good special teamer. Uh, and that's why he continues to stick around and will continue to stick around. Uh, that's why when it was all this talk about Todd Gurley and da, 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 I kept saying Justice Hill's job is not threatened whatsoever. His job is not in jeopardy whatsoever. <laughs> I did not see Todd Gurley as a threat to Justice Hill at all. Not one bit. Um, so with Justice Hill, I, I, I would have to go him on offense slash or most so special teams because he doesn't really get much of a shot on offense uh and the last question he said can malik harrison and patrick queen turn into one of the top inside linebacker duos in the league oh man for sure for sure malik harrison uh he's a guy that me myself haven't i haven't been talking about enough this offseason i really haven't and, and that's a shame because malik harrison he I, I liked him a lot last year his opportunities toward the end of the year, they uh, they started dwindling a little bit. Um, they they got less and less. But Malik Harrison, I, I I like him, man. I like him, and I think he's going to be very good. And I don't just say that because I'm a fan of the Ravens. Blah, 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 blah. I obviously hope all the Ravens players do really good. But he looks like he's going to be really good because he reminds me of a Deshaun Elliott, a guy that. Or Deshaun Elliott before, because obviously now he's gotten a lot more of an opportunity. But before, uh, just a very raw guy, a raw player that just hadn't really gotten much much opportunity. But when he does get his opportunity, he makes plays. He's around the ball, and he is not scared, man. He's not scared. You see some players out there, they can get intimidated by some guys, especially some big guys, especially like super shredder Derrick Henry. But just like with Deshaun Elliott with Derrick Henry, it's the same way with Malik Harrison with Derrick Henry. He is not afraid. And he is very strong. Um, coming into his second year, again, same thing with Patrick Queen, same thing with Matt Abike, with Devin Duvernay, with Proche. These boys ain't having an offseason. It's important to note that they did not have an offseason. And you see what a lot of them did with the opportunity. It's like when they got the opportunity, think about it. When the rookies from last year got the opportunity, they did their thing. Devin DuVernay, when he would get catches, and of course the, the jet sweep king, when he would get them jet sweeps, he would do his thing. And of course on kick return, and then punt return too. And then with J.K. Dobbins, <laughs> I don't even need to get into it. Y'all already know. Um, but even with, um, with Patrick Queen, obviously too. But then even Malik Harrison too. When he got his opportunities, did his thing. Justin Matabike got his opportunities, did his thing. 
Prochet didn't get his opportunity, so he can't really speak on that. But when the rookies from last year got their opportunities, they did their thing. So that could give us even more reason to believe that come this season, when they do get even more opportunities, they will do their thing, especially the duo of Patrick Queen and Malik Harrison. Next question came from my guy BB. He said, do you think the Ravens brought in Williams and Martin in the battle for the offensive coordinator position after G. Rose hiatus as partial offensive? So, okay, so he's already predicting the future and let us, letting us know what he thinks is going to happen. He said, after G. Rose hiatus as partial offensive coordinator. I mean, any team that brings in help for another coach knows that there is a problem or lack of ability to f fully fulfill their position. Change is coming sooner than later. Thanks and hope all is well in this last month of silence. Hope Pookie stops the waterworks too. It's kind of like G Rose aerial attack. <laughs> this guy, man. No, she she's good, man. It it that that came and went, and that was gone within 24 hours. So she's good, back to normal, and that yeah, she's she's straight. I appreciate it though, man. Um, but certainly they they definitely were brought in to put that pressure on G Ro, uh, and because they they specialize where he doesn't specialize at, um, so it's definitely pressure there. So if hope, hopefully G Row does not get fired though. That's not what we want. I know a lot of Ravens fans, like I, I expected it to happen after last season. I thought they were I wanted them to go in a different direction, but if once they decided they were gonna keep G Row, I'm like, okay. I, I do not want a scenario where he gets fired during the season. Reason being because that would mean our offense was not doing well. I want a scenario to where G Row is out there, he's doing his thing. He's out there killing it. The offense is out there killing it. So that means everybody is doing what they got to do. Giro stepped up to the pressure. Giro took notes from Williams and Martin, and, and they had a voice, and it translated to the field. So I don't want Giro to get fired right now, and obviously during the season. So hopefully he doesn't, but those guys are certainly on his neck. Next question came from my guy Kevin. He said, Hey, Graven, hope you are well and the family is blessed. I appreciate you. Wanted to bring up the wide receivers and passing game. Think about this. Lamar has only had one receiver that is Hollywood Browns level. With the addition of Bateman, Watkins, and Wallace, if those three can be three more Hollywood Browns as the floor, the ceiling is anything over what Hollywood has produced so far. The offense will be record breaking. I believe those three individually are equal to Hollywood or better. Now, Watkins, I mean, with, with receivers, you have different types of wide receivers, of course. Uh, Watkins is a much different type of wide receiver than Hollywood is, and so is Rashad Bateman. Um, Tylen Wallace, uh, yeah, him too. But um, with those guys, I do see what you're saying. If, if, if they're, but Watkins is different, though, because we already have seen, we got experience seeing him in the NFL. So I, I can't really say that if his floor can be Hollywood's floor, because Watkins already, he's an experienced guy. He's a veteran. But as far as the other two, even though they're different types of wide receivers, I see what you're saying as far as uh, the production and, and what they can do for the offense. If their floor can be Hollywood's floor, then, yeah, the, ce the, the, the ceiling and the potential for the offense is crazy, crazier than ever. And like you said, it could be record-breaking. If this offense and, and what we anticipate the Ravens doing on offense and hope that they do, uh, if it delivers... It, it's going to be crazy. If it delivers consistently, too, it's going to be wild, man. It's going to be wild because these guys just, and, and again, the running game, we know the running game is going to be the running game, but the passing game is obviously our biggest question. If they can get that thing going, like consistently, they ain't got to be coming out passing for four or 500 yards every game. You don't have to do that. You don't even have to pass for 300 yards every game. But when it's time to pass, you got to be able to pass and just pass efficiently. Continue. They, they've already been very efficient. Lamar Jackson is, is very efficient. He ain't throwing for no 250, 300, 350 yards every game. But he will throw for like two, three touchdowns. And his touchdown to interception ratio is very good. It's, very, it's been very good since the rookie year and it's, it's maintained over the years. Um, so with that being said, yeah, the sky is the limit for this offense. Shout out to